two announcements. Uh, one, the first one is the evaluation. Are you writing evaluation? Yeah. Monday and Tuesday. Okay. Uh, you can write on the paper, paper, or you can do you can do online. The online survey, Google survey. So both ways. And uh, second announcement is uh, I feel very sorry about the book shipment because uh, the teaching is Asia Korea. Uh, the shipment should be done uh, last week, but the shipping company has some problem. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it is still printing now, and we hopefully uh, it will be shipped uh, by Friday. So before you leave, I'm sure you will get the book. So today we will use uh, e-book, not the real paper. Okay. So these uh, two announcements. <clears throat> and the first two lecture of Wednesday is about Korean religion. And uh, I will introduce Dr. Song uh, Dung Bo. Uh, he is Dong Sun Im and Mija, Mija Im Chair Associate Professor of Korean Christianity, Department of Asian Languages and Culture, UCLA. His publications uh, include The Making uh, of Korean Christianity, uh, Encounters of uh, the Pro uh, Protestantism and uh, Korean Religions, and the three volumes of series of the history of the uh, Korean Bible Society, uh, and the five volume series of uh, Horace G. Underwood Papers. Religions at the same time. That's uh, 
Different from religious pluralism, this is a multiple religious identity. One person or one family has many religions. In other words, it is called syncretism. Okay? So, uh, selectively, they practice uh, one religion at a time and the other, the other one on other cases like that. So here are five features, influence of the primary religions. Primary religions here is uh, shamanism and periodic dominance. That means uh, in the past 2,000 years, they practiced uh, certain religion, uh, one religion uh, predominantly, and then next uh, period, they practiced another one. So shamanism, Buddhism, Confucianism, and today, uh, a lot of Koreans practice Charity like that, so periodic dominance, but at the same time, it's a you know, syncretistic multiple religious you know, identity together. Number three, uh, conservatism. Koreans, when they accepted one ideology or religion, they made it very conservative, or sometimes fundamentalistic style of religion or ideology, like uh, communism, even communism, when it came to Korea, it became a very conservative form of Confucianism. In other words, it's a Koreanization or indigenization. Uh, in order to survive against the surrounding powerful countries like China, Russia, Manchuria, or Japan, they intensified that religion or ideology, again, survival tactic. You, know, you have to make a, a kind of religion or ideology very fundamentalist to fight against uh, you know, foreign, foreign invasions or incoming powers. Number four, again, uh, multiple religious identity, uh, plurality, uh, and regional difference. Uh, West and South, North and South, some difference there. Today, Western part of South Korea uh, called Bible Belt or Christian regions, uh, relatively speaking, and Eastern part, uh, Buddhism is dominant. So here is uh, uh, kind of diagram showing uh, periodic dominance of Korean religions. As you see, uh, from they call it 4,000 years of history, but usually you know, scholars, they say 2,000 years. You know. <laughs> so 4,000 years, it's a kind of myth. Here is uh, the beginning point. Uh, oh. Here is a uh, uh, shamanism. Shamanism of the history of very strong religion. So that's why I again we said the first one influence of the primer religion shamanism uh, uh, survived, it has survived a thousand years sometimes by syncretizing with other religions. Uh, so uh, it's called the religion of the people people's religion or folk religion. Uh, shamanism, the title shamanism is given by missionaries and then Japanese, but uh, it's uh, different from uh, Siberian shamanism or Native American shamanism. It's, uh, it's uh, combined with other religions. Uh, it's a very complicated one. But it was just, you know, defined as shamanism by scholars, so that's why we call it shamanism. But it's a very uh, uh, syncretistic religion. Yeah. This this diagram was a uh, 
actually the original one was uh, drawn by a Christian theologian. So uh, he put it there BC and AD, but today you know BCE or you know, CE like that. Yeah, uh, of course they have uh, uh, Western calendar uh, came into Korea and adopted in 1895 around the Gabo reform period. Uh, and so 1894-95 they adopted it. But before that they used their own calendar year. And one of the most uh, uh, used one was uh, The, the, you know the Dangun, the founding father of Korean people. So according to the myth and some uh, history, uh, they calculated was uh, the Korea, the old Korea Joseon was founded in uh, 2,344 <laughs> years BCE. So they calculated, sometimes they calculate their calendar year by the founding of their own kingdom. Like Joseon Kingdom was founded on certain year, and this is the, the 300 year of Joseon founding, like that. So 1894, around that time, Joseon uh, had uh, more than 500 years of history, you know. As you see here, uh, this is a warrior period, the three kingdom period, or a four kingdom period, three kingdom period, and then the warrior period started 818 and 1392. So this is uh, more than five, uh, how many years? Uh, 476 years, almost 500 years, right? And the other one is, here is also more than 500 years. So this is a very unique uh, in East Asia. Uh, one dynasty or one kingdom lasted more than 450 years. So the longest one, unlike uh, Japan or China, one kingdom has lasted for almost 500 years. So this is uh, a uniquely Korean phenomenon, one kingdom 500 years. So it's, in a sense it's a very simple, 500 years, 500 years. And this is a Buddhist kingdom, and Joseon, Confucianism was the state ideology. So periodic dominance, shamanism, and then Buddhism, and then Confucianism. But one religion uh, didn't kill the other one or others. They coexisted, they hierarchical or syncretistic, uh, in a sense, peaceful relationships. That's a Chinese or Japanese case too. Others well. um, but again, people's religion, shamanism, very strong among ordinary people and women, and Buddhism and Confucianism, uh, actually around the you know, fourth century, third century, started. This was a political ideology, political thought, or a political system based on Confucian, Confucianism. But this one. Royal court or a higher class, they adopted Buddhism there, and they produced famous monks, theolo Buddhist theologians uh, from seventh century. One best theologian, Buddhist theologians, were produced in Silla, Baekje kingdoms. Then uh, Confucianism here. Watch this, 1784. New, a new religion came to Korea. That's a Roman Catholicism. And then 100 years later, exactly, uh, Protestantism came to Korea. That's 1884, they say. I uh, have different years, but usually they say 1784, 1884. Uh, Roman Catholicism first, and then Before that, there was another new religion that's a uh, uh, Donghak or Chundogyo, heavenly way religion, made in Korea. That's an uh, uh, indigenous Korean religion, combination of uh, Catholicism, Shamanism, Taoism, and Buddhism, <laughs> Confucianism.
which is an everything together that's called Dongha, Eastern religion or Eastern way, and it became Chundogyo. Uh, once it had three million members, two million members, the, one of the biggest religion in Korea during the Japanese colonial period. Now it has around 30,000 members, 1,000 members, totally different. Very dramatic uh, growth and decline. That's Korean way, in a sense. Very dramatic way of growth, decline. And Christianity, Protestant Christianity today, uh, declining, you know. Uh, so, kind of a circle, you know, growing rapidly and declining rapidly. In a sense, Buddhism is like that, right? Buddhism was, you know, it's a dominant religion, and then for some period it became so-called mountain religion uh, because it was uh, suppressed by Confucianism. They moved to remote area, like mountain areas, and they occupied good sites in the mountains, uh, and they enjoyed the tranquil, uh, quiet place. Christianity today around 25% of South Korean population. Buddhism around 15 to 20%. So which one is the biggest group? You know, which one? Actually, not, no religions. Religious nuns more than 55%. So religious nuns. China, the 90 something percent religious nuns, no religion. Japanese, uh, it depends on your de definition of religions, right? So according to the Western definition, a lot of Japanese has no religions, as you know, uh, even though they are called Buddhist or uh, Shintoist. Uh, but again, they are multiple religious identity people. So from the Western point of view, Japanese, Chinese, Koreans, most non-religious, religious non there. Number one is China, of course, but uh, today, Korea is also moving toward religious non-country, around 55-60%. Uh, Even Christians, uh, they do not attend Sunday worship service today, uh, so-called uh, non-church going Christians, uh, 2 million among 8 million Christians. So huge uh, portion of Christians, they do not go to church like Roman Catholics. <laughs> So-called CEO Christians, Christian Easter only Christians, that's mostly uh, Roman Catholics there, but uh, some more uh, protest Christians uh, decide not to go into the church. A lot of illusions there. You, know. <laughs> you can uh, same thing in the United States. Many young generation, young people, they want go to institutionalized religions. That's uh, the, the biggest trend in Europe, in the United States. Same thing in, in Korea. Because by that, you stay church. Because they don't have time to study all. Sometimes they they go to Starbucks, uh, read the Bibles there. Okay. Like that, they they meet together in small groups, uh, family groups, uh, friends. They together talking. So different styles, so-called emerging churches or missional churches. Different forms of uh, churches are emerging. You know, United States, Europe, and Korea. Korea is like uh, almost like uh, United States. You know, in, in terms of religion. Okay. So this one, uh, one person's identity, or again, multiple religious identity, uh, the core part is shamanistic. Uh, spiritually, they are shamanistic. How do you know one's spirituality? Usually when uh, one meet uh, difficult times or become sick, then you can see his or her uh, spirituality. So Koreans, when they become sick, ill, they uh, think, oh, what, why this kind of sickness, illness? And then and they try to figure out uh, the shamanistic 
very alright and they able to uh, shamans, so I mean misfortune, uh, unlucky things happen, they go to shaman, mudan, try to find uh, the reason. And Taoistic uh, attitude to the nature, uh, when someone fails in the society, they try to read Taoistic uh, text. And Buddhist, uh, very philosophical, uh, when, and they think about death, the most Koreans you know, uh, become, uh, become a Buddhist. And social ethics, that's a Confucianistic way, uh, Human relationships, social relationships, they are uh, Confucian ethics. And Donga, very political, uh, they fought against uh, Japanese colonialism. And Christianity, that's uh, uh, again, this social and political and economic reasons they accepted uh, Christianity. One family, uh, Mami is a Buddhist. Father is Confucianist, Dori is uh, uh, Christian, and son is no religion. That's, <laughs> that's Korean. So, uh, yeah, there were there. <laughs> so, daughters are. <laughs> today, daughters are also not religion. How syncretistic this is uh, a Christian survey. Korean Protestant Christians, you can see here, uh, 2004 and 2012, the difference. Monotheism, 78% uh, to 67%, and eschatology, the second coming, 61% only, and 55%. Life reproduction, 23-45%. And prosperity is important, uh, increasing. And this pluralism means other religions has the possibility of potentiality of salvation. So 25 to 30 increasing. And marital compatibility is how to culture and based on your birth date, year, and time. Uh, matching process, 29% uh, believing the, the utility of the Sajo Parcha. And, and, and Punsue, 29%. And stewardship just up twenty uh, percent because anybody, uh, everybody today, they don't like just uh, it, 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 it waste their time. It's very complicated. It's not good for women. So they they do not practice and stewardship uh, even among ordinary people. Samsara, this is a Buddhist uh, idea of you know reincarnation and, and, and then so nineteen percent increase. So more. Syncretistic tendencies among Christians, you see, uh, at least 30% uh, of Christians accept other religions' basic teachings there. So Buddhist more syncretistic, Shaba is more syncretistic. You know? So Koreans gain multiple uh, religions, I think they very strong there. As you see here, is, this one is uh, 1962 statistics. Religious affiliation less than 10%, from 10% at that time. This is the first national survey, and then after that, every 10 years, they uh, uh, make it, made it. Uh, here again, Buddhism 4.5%, Christianity 4.3%. So up to 1945, less than 3% were Christians. Less than three percent, and then it became how, how many, how much? Uh, Thirty percent in 1980s. So in 50 years, Christianity became from three percent to 30 percent. So that, that's a explosive growth happened. So here is today's one. Uh, Resonance very. Rapidly increasing the, the upper one, that's a uh, rich nuns, uh, more than 55 cents today. And Protestantism, here you see, uh, 25 cents around here, and now around uh, 20 cents. And this is a Roman uh, uh, Catholicism. Roman 
Catholicism very successful, like uh, Protestantism, and then decline. So uh, Protestantism and, and Roman Catholicism together, that's one third of South Korean population, and Buddhism uh, rapidly declining today among young people. Yeah. This one percentage of the South Korean population. Percentage. Yeah, so here is a village nuns declined up to 2008, the financial crisis, and then, yeah. This is a South Korean. Does it also include like international families? No. Yeah, this is a national survey among Korean, Korean population. Not North Korea. North Korea has uh, officially no uh, religious statistics. So South Koreans, uh, so in the past 30 years, as you see, one generation, a big change happened. Right? Any questions here? And second line, for the first time, was financial crisis and yellowness. This one is the first one, 97, there's the first IMF crisis came, and then a lot of people became religious like the United States, right? Americans, after 9-11, similar things happened. And then, second one came 2008, here and there, right? 2008, right. second one. And then, uh, I don't know exactly why, but people changed, especially young people changed. They lost faith in the institutionalized religion, especially Buddhism and Christianity, uh, lost popularity among young people. And then, like this one. So everybody suffered, I mean every group of religious groups in Korea suffered today, like this one, this one, this one. Uh, is this based on attending church or just your religiosity? Your everything, in, yeah, in Korea. So visible thing, that's a religiosity, you know, that's a sociological term. Visibly, you know, so attendance and, and offerings, all those things declining rapidly in South Korea. But we do not know spirituality. That, you know, yeah. that, uh, unmeasurable. So, but there is spirituality. But yet, that's why which group is uh, prosperous? They are shamanistic groups. Because it, it, definition of religion, they do not check the, you know, the shamanistic groups, how many are there, but you know, more shamanistic halls, Mudan's hall exist in Seoul than churches. So, Korean people's spirituality, especially among, among uh, entrepreneurs, small businessmen, people, uh, they depend on shamanism because it works for them. Right, but it's not... Here is no shamanism here, no shamanism here, but that's why uh, these people mean a lot of shamanism. And Confucianism, there is no Confucianism. Okay? Confucianism and shamanism, it, they do not belong to religions in Korea. Yeah, that, that's amazing. <laughs> it's almost as if you're trying to fit around the spirituality of square peg, because it really doesn't tell the story of the spirit. That's why I do not believe in numbers. <laughs> Lot of similarity. The, the root, the, the source is the same thing. The originally, they were saying same shamanism. They believe in the power of the heaven, yeah, and some spiritual beings there, highest, the most highest spiritual power there. So they try to connect with the power, right? So they use their power and sort try to solve their misfortunes. Yeah. Same thing. The Siberia and, and Native Americans here and Koreans. So. Here, Dons and Buddhists, uh, these two groups, Buddhists are mostly shamanistic, shamanism plus Buddhism. And Dons, they are uh, shamanism plus Buddhism plus Confucianism. It's not the Yeah, so, but you cannot ask, you, are you Confucianist? And 90% of Koreans would, would say, I'm Confucianist uh, uh, as a social ethics like that. But, Confucianism, they do not think it's a religion. You know, 
So in, in, in the Western world, uh, from 19th century, world religions course in the United States, world religions included Buddhism, Hinduism, Confucianism, and Christianity. Because of the complete religious studies in the 19th century, and a lot of these things happened. <laughs> and then they included Confucian text in their uh, you know, teaching courses. That's why Confucianism is regarded here as uh, one of the world religions. But in Korea, China, today different. They have some propaganda purpose, they made it religion, but uh, actually, many people don't think. Religion. This is just uh, you know, political ideology and social ethics are different. So, again, it depends on your own definition uh, of religions. Okay. Uh, okay, let's go. <laughs> oh, I, I put the wrong way. So, uh, again, dem demographics here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Protestantism here, so 
tall and gelato like this one. That's why uh, some people say these area are wide open. And especially islands, islands, once they were the regions of shamanism, so most uh, shamanistic people were converted into Christianity. This is a global phenomenon. Uh, if one religion is uh, the predominantly shamanistic one, then uh, Protestantism or Catholicism uh, very successful in the conversion of those indigenous shamanistic people. Same thing among uh, coastal area people, they are shamanistic. Uh, here is your same thing. So most of these are uh, uh, <clears throat> more than 6,000 islands there, as you know. One exception is the Jeju Island. Jeju Island is still shamanistic uh, uh, region. Very strong shamanism there. That's the Jeju Island. Other islands, Wulundo, uh, Gojedo, Jindo, Namedo, or other, even here, Bengyong, uh, 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 many Christians there. Is that related to where the missionaries were more accepted? Were they more accepted along that? that Those area? areas actually uh, evangelized, evangelized by Korean evangelists, Korean ministers. Uh, missionaries, they stayed at, in the city, city station, and they sent Korean evangelists there. So Koreans work among Koreans actually. That's so-called the Navius method, the self method, self support, self uh, propagation, self government. That's a Korean style in this Christianity. That's the method of evangelization. So Koreans themselves became evangelists. That's the policy from the beginning. Okay. So mission is the manage the school, hospital, dispensaries in the cities and they sent out Koreans. So here is uh, uh, each religion's uh, outline, shamanism, Buddhism, Confucian and Christianity. I, I don't have any you know, time but I'll try to. <laughs> uh, shamanism, uh, the founding father Dan Kun was a Mudan king. Shamanism, we can say, it was originated from the Dangun period, uh, from Siberian Manchuria and shamanism. And during the Three Kingdom period, uh, shamanism was tolerated by Buddhism and Confucianism, yet it was subordinated. So it did not become a systemized, institutionalized religion uh, during the Three Kingdom period, unlike the Shinto religion in Japan. Shintoism is uh, shamanism, okay, basically. Uh, it reveals the uh, uh, spirits of uh, deceased ancestors and natural spirits, right? So, shamanism there. It developed into Shinto religion, Shintoism, Shinto in Japan, but in Korea, it didn't just uh, remain as uh, subordinated, as uh, unorganized. Uh, Religion. Taoism in China developed into uh, organized, institutionalized religion, but not shamanism in Korea. Buddhism and Confucianism uh, used in China, Japan, Korea, right? Same thing. But Taoism strong in China, Shinto strong in Japan, shamanism in Korea. There's difference among three countries. Korean period. Uh, shamanism is rejected by Buddhism again, but tolerated. Joseon period oppressed by the Confucianism. Colonial period during the colonial Japanese colonial period, it was stigmatized. Uh, Reason of Korean backwardness, uh, stagnation, because of shamanism. Two thousand years Korea has not developed anything, no new things because of shamanism. Not change, stagnate. Uh, stagnant religion, so Koreans are stagnant because, religious speaking, because of shamanism like that. And Bakchengi period, it was destroyed. 
And that's why childhood period. Um, they destroyed uh, shamanism in the name of modernization, in the name of Semar Undong, new village movement. And then it's revived by student Undong, student movement activists, used the shamanism because it, uh, they say they thought that, that's a, a Korean identity, the cultural identity. Shamanism, people's religion against the central government uh, authority, like that. Uh, and then, so it, shamanism became a symbol of Korean culture in 1980s. And then, what happened? Uh, uh, IMF crisis, financial crisis, it became a religion now. Uh, small business groups can use shamanism for their own benefit fight against the big companies and global companies. So, uh, parochial uh, style religion, uh, small businessmen's religion. That's why a lot of shamans, they earn lots of money today. <laughs> you can see this. So, capitalism promotes shamanism, as you know. So, modern capitalism go together so this view is being, uh, being in harmony with capitalism, you have both your identity, your cultural identity, and capitalism? Yeah, today's uh, neoliberal capitalism, uh, you cannot control it, right? It was like the old age spirit, very precarious, unpredictable. So you have to depend on something. The shaman's power controls a certain part of spirit. So your own area, your own business area, you have your own spirit. Powerful spirit helping you. So uh, certain shaman uh, are yeah, good at those things. Right? So, so your own area, if you, if you are in car business, you need to car spirit. So shamans employed and serving for the spirit, uh, appease them and try to control them, helping you uh, to bring prosperity to your companies. So this kind of capitalistic style shamanism is very uh, popular. So once it was superstition, but now uh, it became a religion after uh, cultural identity, symbol of cultural identity. Uh, so I mentioned here uh, Jesu good, uh, good fortune ceremony, but it, uh, capitalist entrepreneurs, they, they like it. Uh, they, they, they are most of clients and commercial shrines are flourishing in, in Seoul area. Uh, and shamans, uh, their custom became gorgeous and spirit has changed. And they like Morena, whiskey. Well, this kind of Western style uh, offerings. So, uh, so I have to change it to shamanism. And one uh, paper said, spirits of capitalism. Spirits of capitalism, you know. That, that's a shaman's spirit. So here is a capitalism breeze its own while it really magic. So magicality and modernity or post-modernity uh, when uh, go, go together magicality and uh, shamanistic style uh, capitalism <laughs> or, or capitalistic spirits they uh, not harmonious but uh, they like each other and Buddhism uh, Korean Buddhism one of the most important is meditation Korean style Sun Buddhism, Meditational Buddhism, Japanese it called Zen Buddhism, Chinese Chan Buddhism, Korean Sun Buddhism. Sun, the same meaning, the meditation. So the, one of the most uh, unique way of meditation called Ganhua Sun Meditation. And they use keyword word uh, for their meditation. And this method, they say, the best way to discover your own self-nature, self-identity, and 
finding the uh, emptiness of the universe. And you can be enlightened by this method. So they try to become no mind after mindfulness. So it, it, it's, a un, uh, it's very hard to explain because it should be practiced. But uh, you, if you are interested in the Buddhist way of meditation, you need to study the Korean uh, way of, of meditation. So from Korean period, they practice this one. They try to combine uh, uh, doctrinal Buddhism and meditational Buddhism. And then uh, they combine these two one, and it became the mainstream Korean Buddhism. That's why they uh, go to the mountain areas, or a three months a meditational period day. And Joge school today, Joge Jong, Joge school is the mainstream Korean Buddhism. 90% of Korean Buddhism is Joge school. Joge school emphasizes meditation. So enlightenment, just sudden enlightenment, and then followed by gradual uh, cultivation of, of, of Buddhahood in yourself. Okay. That's a Korean way of Buddhism. Today, uh, they promote temple stay. Temple stay means you go to temple and stay there. Why? Try, try to meditate. Try to find your own no mindness. <laughs> that, that's uh, <laughs> uh, Buddhist uh, main practice. Uh, and it's a commercial life, anyway. Uh, they said it. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> How about Confucianism? Uh, it died in the 1880s uh, at the face of modernization, at the face of imperialism. Uh, icon of cultural backwardness, China, Japan, Korea, they abandoned Confucianism in a sense, and some less Confucianists remained at that time. And then after a century, Confucianism divide again emblem of cultural foundation, social dynamism, and political stability, and economic development. Uh, and, you know, uh, dragons, five little tigers, all Confucian countries. So you Confucianist uh, emerged, and they had uh, Confucian capitalism discourse. Why economic success in Japan, South Korea, Hong Kong, Singapore, and China, Malaysia? Why economic success? Not in Latin America ones, in the world developed. Right? So they try to explain it, or economic theory failed to explain the success of economics in East Asia. Uh, they found cultural explanation. Uh, like uh, Protestant ethics and capitalism, they uh, said Confucian ethics uh, promoted a success of capitalism in East Asia. That's Confucian capitalism discourse. Now it died again <laughs> after two economic crises, financial crises. And they blame all these Confucian, all these bad things happened because of Confucianism. So, so, no, it's a kind of uh, secular thing. So, 78 and 96, almost uh, you know, uh, 20 years, the discourse of Confucian capitalism um, uh, dominated among Western scholars and uh, some Korean scholars. The education, the people there, and Confucian feminism, uh, 
strong um, family uh, welfare system there. So, you know, lifelong employment, all those things uh, helped uh, economic success in East Asia, Japan, China, China, Korea. Roman Catholic Christianity came into Korea in 1784. Uh, one of the big issues was uh, Tessa, ancestor uh, veneration. So, uh, veneration or worship. Worship means that uh, idol worship, so it was prohibited. But initially, each uh, Matovich uh, and other Missionaries, they allowed it, or uh, Christian form of ancestor worship. So, uh, rich and accommoda accommodation uh, policy, uh, very successful among higher class in China and then Korea. So, Koreans accepted the monk Catholicism based on rich and theology of accommodation, accommodating to Confucian ideology, especially uh, ancestor worship. And Koreans accepted Roman uh, Catholicism because it promoted equality uh, uh, and gender equality and individual freedom. And then added its Catholicical hope, eternal life. And that's why a lot of Catholic Christians accepted martyrdom. More than 8,000 or 10,000 people were killed during the uh, Joseon period. So, 19th century especially, uh, 65 years of persecutions, more than 10,000 Korean Christians were killed. And among them, 103 became saved and canonized. So I have no time to explain all these things, uh, but what controversy is basically among about uh, instability, the robber or not, uh, they debated more than 205 uh, 50 years uh, in China, once accepted and then and prohibited. That's why uh, the emperor kicked out missionaries and persecuted. Same thing happened in Korea. Uh, and then Vatican II in 1960s, they allowed it again. Now, Christian form is the veneration allowed among Christians. So they practice ancestor worship. Uh, similar form of ancestor worship practiced by Protestant Christians too. So this uh, indigenous form of ancestor veneration again uh, is practicing practiced by Koreans. Protestant Christianity uh, here. Why is successful in Korea? Why not in Japan? Basically, politically, Korea was failed, Korea failed, and Japan uh, defeated China and Russia. So they do not need Western religion, and they, uh, they you know, that kind of imperialism based on Shinto nationalism. But Korea uh, was, you know, became a became colony, and then they tried to overcome national misfortune by Christian nationalism. So in other countries, colonized countries, they were colonized by Christian countries. That's why Christian nationalism was not feasible. It's oxymoron in other countries. But in Korea, Korea was colonized by Japan. Japan was a Buddhist Shinto country. So Christianity was combined with nationalism. That's Christian nationalism was the number one reason of Christian growth. And the missionaries uh, regarded as uh, 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 foreigners of modernization in Korea. So missionaries or mission societies, uh, Christianity was the venue, avenue of modernization. They built schools and hospitals. But in Japan, government built schools and hospitals, not mission. So China a little bit in the middle way. But Korea, Central government is weak, financially weak. So they need a mission in health, American health. And they got America is a good friend at that time. So 
mission is to appreciate, appreciate, but not in China, right? China, they hate the mission. They call that uh, Western devil. But in Korea, they call Western great men and accepted their help. 80s, 90s, uh, up to 1940s. Uh, they appreciated Christian missionaries. And uh, religiously speaking, no strong objections from religious groups. Buddhism weak. And Confucianism, not, not a religious organization, not so strong. Because the government was weak. So, Christianity was accepted as an alternative new religion for national independence and national prosperity organization. But uh, in Japan's case, traditional religions, traditional ideology, strong, and emperor system sustained. sustained. So, uh, Korean Christianity, as you see here, uh, 1950, half a million, and then 1 million, 2 million, 4 million, 8 million, every decade, uh, it doubled. Half a million, million, 2 million, 4 million, 8 million in, uh, as you see here, 8 million in 90. And then they expected a uh, rapid growth up to <laughs> next generation, but then uh, different scenarios started and now is declining. Every religious group declining in South Korea again. But one of the reasons of left growth of Protestantism is the left industrialization organization as you see here. Uh, Ninety percent of Koreans live in uh, cities uh, today. So Christianity is good among urban people uh, and economic growth rate and Christianity growth rate are similar in the 70s and 80s. So economic growth helped uh, urban churches because a lot of people left their hometown and became urban people. They need new communities. So churches like Korean Americans that's a kind of a center for the new community. And they provided a kind of network, helping system, like uh, Korean American churches for the immigrants. So immigrants, they left home, and Korean farmers left home, became urban people. So similar things happened in 70s, 80s churches, and 90s, today's, not today, but uh, in the past uh, decades, Korean immigrants here. Yeah. Yeah, uh, mega churches here, you see, mega churches. Um, once uh, my church, uh, in Seoul home churches, uh, started with uh, 12 people and in several years became uh, 3,000 in five years. And then in 10 years it became 13,000. So now 60,000. So that's Korean style. That's only church. <laughs> So, a uh, lot of problems today there, and now it became, I guess, uh, 30,000 again. So, um, you can say many things there. <laughs> <laughs> so, in a sense, the, the founding minister's charismatic, he can, you know, draw a lot of people there, and benchmarking with uh, American mega churches, so American mega church systems, they exchange programs and this charismatic person, minister, like uh, Paul Yong Gizho or Yong Jo Ha or other you know, mega church senior pastors, they are very powerful person, you know, charismatic, authoritarian. Uh, so Koreans like uh, you know, figure-centered culture, like politics, it depends on one person. Uh, and then he dies or he retires a uh, class. And then they need to start a new things there, like Korean political parties. You know. So they change names uh, every five years. Kind. So here, uh, mega church is similar. It, it, it lasted uh, more than uh, 25 years, 30 years. And then the, the founding pastor dies or 
disappear, then certain different things come. So a lot of computation schisms there. Uh, so it's called uh, here autonomous pluralism of the gospel was prophetized of family style in the church. But today, so small churches, uh, small group churches emerging there among young people. So young, young pastors, they uh, create new forms of churches. So I have some hope. I am a Christian. I, I, once I was a pastor. So, <laughs> so uh, you things happen there. Okay? Same thing among uh, other religious groups. So here, uh, this is my own uh, uh, hypothesis. Uh, 1920s churches declined rapidly because of a lot of challenge from communism and new thought. A young generation left the churches. And then, after the liberation, here the economy grew, grew, and church grew, here is 1980. That's the, the, the peak. And then, uh, they didn't know that it was the declining uh, spirituality, but uh, numbers grew, still grew there. But I, I think uh, that the, the recession period started in uh, 1990s, and then stagnation came and here. So at least the one more generation, they will decline, I guess. Uh, who knows? Uh, it could uh, be bound or not, we do not know. But, Still, uh, the bottom didn't come yet. I have no minute now, <laughs> one minute now. Uh, so quickly skip this one. Uh, this is uh, North Korean refugees. Uh, North Korean refugees also declined. <laughs> you know, uh, so North Korean economy is good today, in a sense, and tight uh, border. Security there, so no more one. And a lot of these uh, women, 70, more than 70% are women, young women. They earn lots of money in South Korea, send money to their families in North Korea, so they do not need to come to South Korea. Many things. And many of them are Christians, and now also Christian number declines. And Korean Americans here, uh, Korean Americans. Uh, today, uh, you have known this uh, screen. Fifty way period started around 2000. They are short term immigrants. Okay? And most the uh, students and their moms. Uh, and so called who's there. And a few of them are evil that a lot of money they can come as uh, uh, when they meet. <laughs> Eagles can come anytime, but who's once a year? Uh, okay. So where they live, uh, they live in these areas. Uh, how many churches today? Uh, Korean American churches uh, around 4,300. Uh, now declining. They said 5,000, now 4,300. Churches declining here too. That's the uh, same thing. Uh, what's the, the changing features uh, here? Once it was the social, cultural, spiritual centers for the immigrants. And then around 1997, around that time, it changed its uh, nature from these uh, community centers on community centers to just the uh, religious and, and spiritual centers. Because other groups, non-government uh, uh, organizations, so NGO groups, a lot of NGO groups working among Indians, Korean Americans. So once uh, certain, certain roles were given to the churches, but now NGO groups, they do works for them, Korean Americans. So churches become just the churches today and try to survive because of the reduced number. Today's situation. Uh, thank you so much. We have been.
very close now. <laughs> Japan 
why? Yes. 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 Yes.